The Harris government began to shop for a deal that would refinance the debt, leaving them in a position to at least survive. They were impressed with the advisory team put together by a Sydney-based lending broker, Business Australia Capital Finance. Among those photographed for BACF advertising was a former assistant treasurer in the Keating government, George Gear, and a managing partner at Ernst & Young, Andrew Sudholtz. That was where all parties came together with a strategy to refinance the GE capital debt and the process that should be undertaken to, to endeavour to achieve that. These are very re legit people. So that impressed you and gave you confidence that there was legitimacy to this enterprise? Yes. Representing Nauru was then Economic Development Minister Remy Namaduk. Beside him is BACF founder Ian Lazar. What was your motivation? Well, to start off with, of course, money. I'm, I'm a businessman. I don't make any apologies for that. And there's nothing wrong with making money. But let me tell you, um, it's also very exciting when you, uh, and it doesn't happen very often, I might say, where you've got the opportunity to, to save the assets of a, of a country or a nation. BACF was to later claim it was owed over $40 million for seeking to assist Nauru. Bills from the collected advisers exceeded $1 million, while Nauru was chasing additional millions. They couldn't pay wages. You know, we get phone calls that, you know, the president's car's been blown up, or that the, the, the tires are being slashed on the only aircraft they got left. No one's been paid in four months. So that's what we did. We, we, we forwarded monies under loan agreements and mortgages, and we paid wages. We paid the government's payroll. We helped them. But we made money doing it, and I don't apologise for that. It's called business. With the deal unsigned, further funds were committed to cover expenses and more. It was offered firstly the directorship, you know, it was offered uh, houses, anything, cars. What was your Ian response? Ian is a very impressive man. Well, not to disappoint a man, that's in any business. I said later, we'll talk about that later. Let's focus on what we have to do now. Did you interpret the, these offers as bribes? In a way, yes, but I can handle that. That's no problem. Then President Renee Harris became a shareholder and former President Kinzer Clodemar a director of a BACF-related company. But when the government changed, a new eye was cast over the BACF deal by a new trust minister, Fabian Rebo. The deal was uh, just basically a false, false promise. They said that they will, were going to refinance the GE debt and they never had the resource or capacity to do such, such things. It appears that the Honourable Kinsa Clodemar wants to help these people steal our assets. In Parliament, Rebo complained about his predecessor's alleged conflict of interest. Evidence emerged of a reputed $25,000 loan by BACF to Clodemar. Do you agree that the loan to Kinza Clodemar of $25,000 was a bribe? Firstly, it was not $25,000, it was $60,000. Secondly, someone who borrows money against uh, their own property, their own residential property, in my opinion, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't be taking it if, he, if, if it was a bribe. I mean, it's a ridiculous allegation. You know, we have registered mortgages, proper loan agreements, proper documents, proper securities, and it wasn't even to him. He, it's actually his daughter. The Clodemar family's property holdings in Australia has raised questions in Nauru, as has his allegiance to BACF. Clodemar helped bring down his own government by crossing the floor in support of the deal. Was this payment, alleged payment, was this declared to the Nauru government by Kinza Clodemar? No. No. The first Clodemar holds to the view he acted properly and the BACF deal was in Nauru's best interest. The new government did not agree the proposal failed and General Electric put the Nauru Trust into receivership, selling up some of the properties. 
Nauru blamed BACF for changing plans and threatening loss of control of the assets. BACF complained the problem was they could not get Nauru to the table. They won't sign documents, or the right person won't sign, or they think they've got a better deal on the table, or the people who were meant to sign couldn't make the flight, or they lost their passport, or the usual story. Or they're playing golf because, you know, they, they're meant to come to our meeting and, you know, it's more exciting to play golf than sign documents to save the last of their assets, you know? It's, it's as I said, I mean, if it wasn't the seriousness of, of a nation's assets, it would be, it'll, it'll be a good movie. After a mediation session, Nauru settled for an undisclosed sum around $10 million. They were not the only ones out of pocket. It turned out a score of BACF investors were also unhappy. I realised that the, the stress that it was putting us through personally, and uh, I just don't want anybody else to be drawn into that. There's enough people already uh, that Ian Lazar has affected. And uh, I, I just think as time has come to stop investors from investing. It still seems so credible. David and Anne Nicholson are two of many waiting to recover monies lent through BACF. Like the Nauruans, the Nicholsons were impressed by the caliber of the BACF team and at first its leader. They were not the only ones then unaware that Ian Lazar, the son of a prominent Sydney rabbi, is a former bankrupt, Ian Rogert. Did you know about Mr Lazar's background and his different name and the bankruptcy? No, no. You know, all these uh, allegations of, uh, of me being sinister or, you know, in this, in this attempt by the trust and the solicitors for the trust to discredit me, um, you know, it's, it's uh, as I said, a personal matter, but I didn't want my business... Uh, connected or related to my father because I'm not in his industry, I guess you want to call it. Um, and I love my father very dearly and I'm very close to my father and my family. And, uh, you know, he shouldn't be uh, or have to be involved in any, any business that I do. You know, and that's it. I mean, I've chosen to use my mother's name. There's nothing sinister with that. It's a family name. At the direction of the receivers, Nauru moved from its Melbourne tower at the end of August. I mean, that's, that's like our flagship in Australia. I mean, for me to walk around in Melbourne and look at that building with the blue star on top makes me proud, but now it's gone. It, it is hard to take. The battle to either save the assets or capture the crumbs is as much as past. Advanced from nearby offices of Babcock and Brown was a rival deal with fees estimated at around $15 million. With that now dead, Ian Lazar is hopeful his deal can be revived if the government changes again. It's something that I don't blame the Nauruans for because they don't even understand it. And it stems from the trust, the current trust, the new trust, who once again I met for the first time in mediation. And it stems from a malicious attempt to defame me, defame my company, and defame all the work that I've done for the last 12 months or year and a half in an attempt to push a deal that is inevitably bad for Nauru. Or like sell off the bulk of Nauru's remaining properties. The new deal is sick of all the talk and all the bills. His cabinet has allowed an Australian government finance team to come in to help Nauru sort out the mess. Rebo has come to realise that trust is not something Nauru can rely on. During those many expensive meetings in Australia, the economics graduate felt the pressure to get home and study up on ways to feed his family. This is a fairly new skill, if you want to call it that. I've, I've always been non-skilled at this type of things, but uh, since I came back from overseas, I saw that uh, where I more or less saw where Nauru was heading, and I thought that uh, this is one of the skills that we would need in the future in order to feed our, our, ourselves and our families, yeah. Fabian Rebo knows that the time has come for Nauru to pay for and learn from its own mistakes. 
One of the million regrets of this tiny nation is the recognition a large and expensive advice industry that's been profiting mightily for years will share none of that accountability. You can join former High Commissioner Beres Gwynn, representatives from the Nauruan government and reporter Chris Masters in an online discussion from 9.30 tonight Eastern Time. Just go to abc.net.au slash four corners.